is going on everybody? I go by the name of Kari and I want to thank you guys for joining me here today on Sneaker Fetish. It's Air Max Month and Air Max Month is a special one for 2022 because we're celebrating the 35th anniversary of the original Air Max 1. And while there's been some incredible Air Max 1s that we've seen along the way or that we've actually seen coming up, today's sneaker that we're taking a look at is on my top 10 list for best sneakers of 2022. You heard it here First, without further ado, we gotta look at the packaging first, and then we're gonna look into the shoe. We're talking about Concepts today, and Concepts, as we all know, is a Boston-based boutique that has had some of the best collaborations with Nike that we have seen in quite some time. The Turduncan Dunks that had the incredible packaging with it, that was Concepts. A lot of the more amazing Kyries that we've seen with some of that dope special edition packaging, Concepts as well. Concepts has had some really, really amazing collaborations with Nike and this one is no different. We see odes to the sneaker all over the box here. We're talking today about the 60s. More importantly, the Summer of Love, which was coined as 1967, but the music festival scene and what was really going on in the 60s, which by the way, there was a little company in the 60s that was formed that was also called Nike. So Concepts wanted to celebrate Nike and also celebrate the Summer of Love with their Message to the Universe collection. Their collection is tightly knit and it all has to do with what you see on the box here. The bandana prints, the tiger camouflage, the flower for the flower children or the hippies. We're gonna talk about that. It's all coordinated into the sneaker as well. But the box itself is just giving me 60s, even with kind of this weird wavy kind of psychedelic looking concepts on the front and back of the box. The box masterfully executed. Let's get to the shoe itself. Boom. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Concepts and Nike Air Max One Mellow from the Message to the Universe collection. Top 10. Top 10 2022. Listen, debate your mama, debate your auntie, debate your cousin, debate your uncle. This right here is top 10 2022. From the materials to the execution to the inspiration and the history and the story behind it, I haven't done this much research about a sneaker in a very long time. But before we get into kind of the inspiration behind the shoe as a whole, let's dive into it because we'll probably be chipping away at the inspiration as we look at the different materials in the shoe. Let's dive in. All right, starting with the upper on the sneaker altogether, you have this washed light colored denim on the upper of the sneaker that goes from the quarter panels around the toe box down into the mud guards of the shoe as well. And it's real deal denim. If you feel it, it's real denim. Now, one cool thing about this shoe is that no two pairs of the denim are the same. I don't know where they source the denim from, but no two pairs are the same. Some pairs are gonna look lighter, some pairs are gonna look darker, and that adds to the character of the shoe. No two are the same. Now, everything about this shoe has to do with bohemian and kind of hippie culture, and one big thing about that culture was the fact that they wore different fabrics and they wore different things. The way that they dressed in the 60s was extremely eclectic, and that's captured in the different materials and in the different panels of the sneaker. Let's go to the swoosh. Now, the reason why I like the mellow colorway as opposed to some of the other colorways is that while the overall colors may not have been my absolute favorite from the pack, the swoosh, it really is my favorite swoosh in the pack because you have kind of that red, black, green swoosh that to me represents the Pan-African flag. Now that may not even be the real inspiration. They basically just said that the swooshes represent bandana prints and different bandanas people had on. But in the 60s, of course, there was a large movement for people like the Black Panthers and there was a lot of anti-war protesting things going on as well. A lot of religious causes and political causes and so when I see the red black and green that's immediately where my mind goes and so I kind of like that ode to that at least in my mind even if it's not really the real inspiration all right moving down from the swoosh here a really popular fashion staple from the 60s was the m65 military surplus jackets that were used as standard issue back in the wars you guys remember the 60s meant the continuation of the Vietnam War which was huge and a lot of people were protesting it back then however in the midst of that the M65 jackets were actually a jacket that you can find at a lot of military surplus stores. A lot of people, even hippies or even bohemians, they were wearing the M65 jackets just because they were comfortable. They were kind of big, kind of boxy. You could hold a lot of stuff in them. They were comfortable. They had hoods on them. They protected you from the rain. And the material was actually a really good, solid material as well. So that inspiration from the M65 jackets is in the material going around kind of right above the midsole of the shoe. Really dope. Let's go up from there to the eyelids. You got 
guys see on the top eyelids here, purple corduroy right here. Corduroy was another very popular garment, very popular material that was worn back in the day. Now let's go back down to the mud guards here. You guys will notice this cow print. What in the world is this cow print for? I'm glad you asked. I'll be honest with you guys, the cow print is probably one of my favorite Easter eggs about this entire sneaker. The way the story goes is you guys remember Woodstock back in 1969, one of the biggest music festivals of the 60s. It was founded by four very young people. The oldest person I think that put on Woodstock was like 26 or 27 years old. They were young. They were trying to find a venue to hold Woodstock at and the towns that they were trying to hold the venues at kept rejecting them because they were afraid of how many people were going to show up and it might be too much to contain. They were getting a little bit desperate because they were about a month away from the actual show date but there was a dairy farmer that was right outside of New York in Bethel, New York named Max Yasger. Max Yasger owned a 600 acre dairy farm that he ended up renting out to Woodstock and that's where Woodstock was held. Now, remember I mentioned that he was a dairy farmer, which means that there were cows on that dairy farm. As we all know, Woodstock was supposed to only be 40 to 50,000 people and grew to an estimated 500,000 people that ended up showing up. It got so big and it got so massive that Max, the owner of the dairy farm, could no longer control his cows and he ended up letting the cows chill with the concert goers. And because everybody was all about loving the animals, a lot of vegetarianism was going on back in the 60s and animal rights causes, they just hung out with the cows. So the cows were just chilling out at Woodstock along with everybody else right in the grass and the mud. So the fact that we have this cow print here, which by the way is made out of actual bovine fur, is really, really dope. That's a great touch from Concepts. Taking a top down look at the shoe here, we see these kind of celestial, this slash star moon stitched into the toe box of the shoe. Listen, let me take the shoe down for a second. I have been trying to figure out what the slash star and moon mean for a very long time. I was even so stuck on researching it that I actually held off filming this because I was asking people that were at Woodstock back in the day, people like my own stepfather, what in the world do these symbols mean? If you guys notice, the symbols are actually on the box itself, this slash star and moon. And the best thing that I got is the fact that these have something to do with either like celestial or religious kind of symbols. There were a lot of people that were really into like that religious symbology or astrology back in the day as well. The only thing that really seemed reminiscent where I saw these symbols at from anywhere around the Woodstocks or the music festivals of the 60s were all what was known as the light bus. Now the light bus was actually one of many Volks wagon buses that a lot of bohemians and hippies and concert goers that were going to these places in the 60s, they kind of crowded inside of these big vans and drove up to these places. These were actually painted all around the buses with all these different symbols. The light bus in particular had a sphinx on one side. It had a bunch of symbols that looked like this all around the grill on the front of the bus. It was completely decked out and it was actually redone a few years ago to make sure that the essence of what was captured in the 60s was maintained and kind of updated. But that's the best thing that I got. If you guys have a better explanation for these symbols, please sound off down in the comments below. Let me know what these symbols mean because I still want to know. Closing out with the tone though, really, really dope. They actually got the original 1970s Nike logo, which I thought was really fly. And then of course they have kind of that 60s inspired concepts logo right underneath the Nike logo as well. Three sets of laces on these. You get the regular maroon laces, you get a regular set of white laces, and then you get a red velvet set of laces to actually match the red velvet tongue. So I think a lot of people are doing the velvet laces because it just looks so different and so cool. I don't know how well these would keep as far as tying them though. So if you guys want to do the velvet, sound off. Let me know how these will do well. Do they even stay tied? Around the collar of the shoe, you have the Concepts logo that's actually woven into the tribal print. Again, more tribal print inspired by kind of those blankets and garments that we saw on Bohemians and Hippies back in the 60s. Very dope. On the medial side of the shoe, Miss Matt swoosh by the way the medial swoosh actually is a flower swoosh just like we saw on the lid of the box itself inspired by flower power flower children whatever hippies were calling themselves that's what that's for. Moving around to the back of the shoe here, I'm switching over to the left shoe because I feel like the details on the paisley bandana print on the back of the shoe are a lot more pronounced on my pair on the left shoe than the right shoe. But again, you have kind of the frayed edges representing just kind of the loose threads that you saw on a lot of the clothing back in the 60s with really just looks like a regular paisley bandana, but really, really well done. And again, this really kind of tough canvas material as well, very fly. You want more Easter eggs in detail? you got it, a guitar pick hang tag, co-branded with concepts 
and Nike. So you could probably take this off. I don't know if you can really play it with your guitar, but a guitar pick, again, we're talking Summer of Love, we're talking music festivals, we're talking Woodstock, we're talking Jimi Hendrix and the national anthem played like it had never been played before. And of course, you've got to have the guitar pick to represent all those dope rock and roll acts that were back in the day, back in the 60s. Incredible touch. It's just the details don't stop with this shoe. It's crazy. Moving down to the midsole of the shoe, mud speckled midsole in here. Kind of these speckles here represent if you were to splash these around in mud, what the shoe would end up looking like. That goes into kind of this brownish outsole here, which I think probably represents kind of the same thing. If you were to wear this shoe at a music festival in the 60s, they would look all kinds of crazy and they would be covered in mud at the bottom. So brown outsole on this shoe. And on the insoles, very dope abstract looking art here on both of the insoles kind of tying into one another with the Concepts branding on the heel. And that's pretty much it when it comes to the Concepts and Nike Air Max 1 Mellow. Now this is how you do a shoe right here. This is what storytelling in a sneaker looks like. You know what's funny about this sneaker is that it actually reminds me a lot about what we're currently dealing with in 2022. The 60s really speak to a time where there was a lot going on in the world. There were political issues, racial issues, war going on in the world. There actually was a pandemic. Little known fact, a lot of people don't realize Woodstock, when it happened, was actually in the middle of a horrible flu pandemic. The people just going to Woodstock just didn't care. And because it was the 60s, they definitely didn't have kind of the oversight of the way that they do things now with masking and requirements and shutting things down. You know, I'm not here to debate which is right and which is wrong, but even though it was during a pandemic, it will kind of suck if we ended up not having a Woodstock because everything is shut down. But little known fact, Woodstock was during a pandemic. Now, let's keep it a buck here. This shoe is about drugs. This shoe has a lot of that inspired with it. It's to capture the entire essence of the 60s. And while we can talk about all the other amazing things and controversial things and powerful things happening in the 60s, the fact of the matter is that they named this shoe Mellow. They named the new colorway of the shoe that just came out today Heavy. And if you're familiar with the term heavy back in the 60s or the psychedelic print that's actually on all the promotion materials, you guys would understand that this sneaker is actually an ode to a lot of the drug use that happened back in the 60s as well. It was prominent, it was real, and it was very rampant at all of the music festivals that were going on back in the day as well. And it works. We know what you're doing, Concepts. Wink, wink. These right here are why I tell you guys that sneakers we really gotta appreciate them. There's been a lot of special collaborations that have been coming out, like with Concepts. We just got finished with the Union Los Angeles and Nike Dunk Low Passport. And these are really dope too, with the frayed edges here. You can pull those off, reveal premium leather underneath. Some of the collaborations that we've been getting lately have been so special, but it's hard because they come out and then we toss them to the side because something else is coming and something else is coming and something else is coming. And the thing about it that I really want us to understand is there's something out here for everybody. My hope, my sincere hope, is that you're able to get your hands on some of these more special projects that these communities and these boutiques and these companies and these stores have been really working in a painstaking manner in order to make them happen with Nike. But with that, I got a gripe with Nike and it'll be my last thought. How come we didn't get this much attention and this much power and this much emphasis for Black History Month? Yes, I'm gonna sound like that guy that wants to know why we got this phenomenal sneaker for Air Max Month, why we got this really dope dunk from Union, which is a black owned company, but we couldn't get something special for Black History Month specifically. We got all these black owned brands, black owned businesses, again, like Union, doing these special collaborative projects, but when it came to our month, when it came to Black History Month, Nike gave us three mediocre black Air Force Ones, merchandised their podcast that nobody really watches called Future Movement, and told us to be happy with that. What in the world is going on at the brand right now where we can't get this kind of emphasis for Black History Month. I don't know. I mean, obviously Nike knows that they got us in a chokehold because we're gonna keep buying up all their products anyway, so maybe they don't have to do anything for us for Black History Month because we're gonna just buy out whatever else we want for Air Max Month or for any other special project that comes out. And it is what it is, but you know, it still would have been nice. I'm stepping off that soapbox. Now it's time for you guys to sound off down below. Let me know what you guys think about the Air Max One Mellow by Concepts. Are these ones that you guys wanted to add to your collection, you were able to get your hands on? These actually just dropped on sneakers today while I'm filming this. And so hopefully you guys were able to get the second chance and get your pair, or you guys were able to get the heavy version of these that just dropped with Concepts as well with the Tiger Camo on them. 
beautiful sneaker. I think there's actually one more in the collection as well. Correct me if I'm wrong, but those look nice as well. So hopefully you guys are able to get your hands on these. If not, let me know why. Were these a hard pass for you or did you want these and just weren't able to get your hands on them? Sound out down below, let me know. Of course, write it down in the comments, make sure that you Click on that subscribe button so we can welcome you into the sneaker fetish family to make sure you don't miss out on any more heat that comes through like these because I guarantee you I got a lot more heat on the way. As always, I want to thank you guys for joining me here today on Sneaker Fetish, taking a look at these with me, unboxing them with me for a couple of minutes. I go by the name of Kari. This is the Concepts and Nike Air Max 1 Mellow. And until next time, I'm out.